My name is Melissa Smiles, and I am the Office and Public Relations Manager of the Kidney Transplant Program at the University of Florida and Shands Hospital in Gainesville, Florida. And I'm here with Dr. Erwig Ulf Meyer Kresha, who's the Medical Director of the University of Florida Kidney Transplant Program. And we have a few questions for him today. <laughs> okay, Dr. Meyer Kresha, would you tell us what the current success rate is with kidney transplantation today? So kidney transplantation is a very successful procedure when you just talk about the statistics. Uh, about 95% 95 of kidneys are still um, doing well one year after transplantation and more importantly in the long term kidneys can last um, 10, 20, even 30 years. On average uh, deceased donor kidneys last about 10 years in the United States. Uh, living donated kidneys last significantly longer. Uh, the, the more important aspect of transplantation is that it is really a life-saving procedure. Uh, there are several um, complications of the medications patients need to take for kidney transplantation, but despite of that, patients with a kidney transplant uh, live at least twice as long compared to patients on dialysis. And that is not because kidney transplantation in itself restores all the problems a patient has which has brought them to the point that they need dialysis, but it is probably mostly because dialysis is such a limited procedure in terms of replacing the kidney function. So being dialysis so limited in its success, kidney transplantation provides a significant survival benefit over dialysis. Importantly, the success is um, really driven by the uh, quality of the donor organ and in that sense, if a patient gets an organ from a living donor, uh, that is really the ideal situation because living donors um, are extremely carefully screened because we don't obviously want to harm a living donor. And uh, for that reason, if a living donor passes all the different screens in order to become a living donor, that also means that the organ which the ultimate recipient is getting is absolutely ideal. And uh, if you look at the overall benefit of living donation, for younger patients who receive a living donor transplant, their life expectancy actually triples. So it seems like what you're telling me is the key messages are to sign up on the kidney transplant wait list as soon as possible. Don't wait while you're on dialysis. Sign up as soon as possible and explore the idea of living donation. Yeah, the signing up part is really important for those people who do not have a living donor available um, because um, given that kidney transplantation is such a survival benefit uh, to patients on dialysis, it's kind of obvious that being on dialysis is not a good thing. And there's actually fairly um, extensive uh, material available to show that patients who are on dialysis for longer times just don't do as well even after they get their transplant. So the timing of the transplant is really crucial, getting the transplant early and minimizing the length of time on the waiting list. So the best way, obviously, is to have somebody who wants to donate a kidney be ready, possibly even before needing dialysis with the donor and uh, get a transplant before dialysis is ever needed. Now, for those patients who do not have a donor available, they really need to sign up on the waiting list as soon as possible because by that they can minimize the length of time on dialysis. What many patients don't know that they can sign up for the waiting list at any time, uh, way before they ever go on dialysis. Now they start accumulating waiting time from the moment their glomerular, fil glomerular filtration rate goes below 20% or roughly below 20% of estimated kidney function. What's important about that is that many patients can do very well without dialysis with a GFR of 20, sometimes even for years. That means a patient can accumulate several years of waiting time while still not on dialysis and when they are approaching the need for dialysis, they might have enough uh, points on the waiting list that they might get a transplant even before they go on dialysis. And that's something which is really important to emphasize to all the patients, to the referring nephrologists, and the community at large that it really makes a difference to screen early, get listed early, and prepare for the possibility of transplantation. Very important. Great. The surgical techniques have changed a lot in the past few years. What can you tell us about how we've taken measures to be less invasive with our patients? 
So for the kidney transplant in itself, uh, even though things are obviously improving over time, the procedure has actually changed relatively little over time. What has changed dramatically is the uh, living donor nephrectomy for the living donor. So patients who um, agree, agree to donate a kidney, they have now the possibility uh, to donate their kidney uh, with less invasive surgical techniques, laparoscopic techniques, which leave less of a scar and overall uh, leave the donors with less discomfort. Be that as it may, this is still a major surgical procedure and it is certainly a major sacrifice for donors to go through this. And clearly we cannot minimize uh, what living donors go through and also the immediate and long-term risks, which are clearly there. But when we carefully screen donors and uh, use these minimally invasive techniques, certainly we can improve the confidence and the uh, comfort of the donors. Now, to patients who are on dialysis, what does the time spent on dialysis, how does that impact the success of kidney transplantation? Uh, the biggest risk of being on dialysis is cardiovascular disease progression. Uh, so the longer patients linger on dialysis, uh, the more they will encounter cardiovascular problems, specifically coronary artery disease, potential heart attacks, and uh, these things can potentially also uh, compromise the patient's ability to receive a, uh, a transplant in the first place. So if a patient stays on dialysis for too long, they might not even be medically eligible anymore for a transplant. Um, and obviously also any type of disease progression on dialysis uh, will limit the chances of survival after the transplant. So it's, it's really crucial to avoid dialysis as much as possible. That doesn't mean that dialysis is a bad therapy because it keeps people alive, yet it is not a good idea to be on dialysis for a very prolonged period of time. What do you say about pairing kidney transplantation with pancreas transplantation at the same time for those who need it? That, that is really an ideal option uh, for patients with uh, type 1 diabetes who end up with end-stage renal disease. Diabetes is a very important driving factor for kidney disease in the United States. Uh, most of the patients who have end-stage renal disease from diabetes are type 2 diabetics. If a patient has type 1 diabetes, uh, which is really driven by the lack of insulin production by the uh, beta cells within the pancreas, by replacing also the pancreas, uh, the diabetes can actually be cured. By transplanting a pancreas in addition to the kidney, the recipient receives these crucial beta cells which produce insulin. And uh, with that, if the pancreas works well, um, there's no need to take insulin after the transplant. And more importantly, many of the diabetes complications which arise over time can be slowed down or even be reversed. Uh, another uh, benefit of a combined kidney pancreas transplant is that as the pancreas has to be of really good quality, usually has to come from uh, very good donors, in return the kidney which comes with it is also going to be of very good quality. So there's uh, somewhat of a built-in advantage for combined kidney pancreas transplant patients. Also with how the waiting list is currently structured, the waiting times for combined kidney pancreas transplant patients are somewhat shorter. Now there's two types of diabetes, type 1 and type 2. Why does kidney and pancreas transplantation benefit type 1 diabetics and not type 2 diabetics? In simple terms, a patient who has type 1 diabetes is not making insulin and you can replace the insulin by the pancreas. A type 2 diabetic patient uh, is making enough insulin but the peripheral tissues are not sensitive to the insulin. So by uh, replacing the insulin or making more insulin with the pancreas, the problem of the peripheral tissue, tissue sensitivity to the insulin is not going to be resolved. And typically in a type 2 diabetic patients, if you put a pancreas transplant in, uh, it doesn't really change their diabetes. More importantly, obviously, a pancreas transplant is also a significant uh, additional surgical risk. It's a much bigger procedure than the uh, kidney transplant. It's, it's fairly invasive. Um, if the pancreas doesn't do well, there's a lot of potential complications. So it's important to really resolve the pancreas transplants only for those patients who really can 
uh, significantly benefit from. Where have we come in the evolution and the dosages of medications over the past 10 years? So there have been a lot of uh, innovations in medications for the transplant. Uh, most importantly, the immunosuppressive medications have changed over the decades. Uh, for the last 10 years, we have not really seen any uh, new drugs on the market, yes, yet we have had a uh, significant improvement in the understanding on how to use those drugs, how to minimize side effects, um, how to uh, recognize patients who may need more or less medications, and very importantly also uh, the other medications we are using to um, treat some of the complications of the transplant medications and of the kidney failure in themselves have improved significantly. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your involvement with the surf festival and also your history as a surfer. So we, we got involved with the surf festival last year and uh, one of the reasons why we have been so enthusiastic about it is because we have a couple of patients who are active surfers and they really embody the um, active lifestyle and the continued active lifestyle after transplantation. Uh, one of the messages uh, which are really important to all uh, patients who prospectively are looking at a transplant is that they can be normal after a kidney transplant. First of all, uh, the need for dialysis goes away, so there's a significant time involvement with the therapy. Uh, certainly improves after transplantation, but more importantly, an active lifestyle is possible and patients can really do anything they had been bef doing before they got sick with the kidney failure. So many patients dramatically alter the lifestyle when they find out that they have kidney disease. Uh, when they get a transplant, they can really go back to what they had been doing originally as long as they are really um, as they have the drive and the energy to do that and it, that is so important in order to uh, maximize uh, really the outcomes of the transplant and the the overall health of the patient. Great. I have to say I had the privilege of getting involved with the National Kidney Foundation Surf Festival last year. So you up in Shands had a surf clinic of sorts at the National Kidney Foundation Surf Festival last year. It was our first year being involved in quite some time. Originally, Dr. Tischer was involved with helping get the event started, but we've kind of come full circle thanks to one of our patients, Bill Hahn, who is the one in charge of this blog that you're watching this video on. And Bill Hahn is one of our patients. He received his kidney and pancreas transplant on New Year's Eve, and he's been very near and dear to our hearts. He's helped out with this event very much in the past, and he's also very close to the event's founder, Mr. Rich Salick, who is the community director, the community relations director of the National Kidney Foundation, and was there really at the inception of the event 25 years ago. Well, this will be its 26th year. So we were involved with its 25th year, and it was a lot of fun. We were able to interact with people who were patients of ours, people who are going to be patients of ours, just people in the Cocoa Beach community out there having a great time at the surf festival. We brought a lot of awareness. We had lots of games and lots of quizzes. And I was really pleased to see actually that a lot of people were getting the right messages about kidney transplantation. And if they had misconceptions about early waitlisting or multi-listing, they were really eager to find out what the truth was. And uh, I really look forward to continuing this involvement between our hospital and the National Kidney Foundation Surf Festival in the future. It's a great event. I encourage everyone to come out. It's a good time of music, food, being out there and supporting people, supporting the surfers, supporting the people who have donated organs, people who have received organs. It's a really impressive event.